Hello, great talks. Welcome back. It's economics with me, Spiwe, and we are evaluating the South African approach and we are looking at policies uh, that are used to achieve economic growth and development. So our second um, initi initiative or policy that we're going to look at is the GEAR, uh, which is the growth, employment and redistribution um, policy. So the main strategy was to strengthen economic development um, redistribute income and create socio-economic opportunities uh, for the poor. Okay, so very interesting um, initiative um, and I was always you know, fascinated uh, by how it was set out um, and I've spent a, a lot of time even when I was doing my uh, post-grad um, studies just looking at um, how um, this policy has has made an impact in terms of um, economic growth and development. So it's important that we have a good understanding of how this policy worked. Uh, so we know that its, it's, its focus was around economic development, uh, the redistribution of income, and also to create um, socioeconomic opportunities for the poor. So let's evaluate this policy. So there were mixed outcomes, you know, I, I like this because there were some good uh, things that came out of the policy, uh, but there were some challenges as well, um, or stories or areas that um, they were not um, successful in achieving uh, what they had set out in their strategy. And also it brought um, great financial discipline and also macroeconomic stability. We like this. When we, we, when we talk about financial discipline, it's, it's something that is important in our study and in our sector uh, because we want to achieve um, that financial discipline. But most importantly, uh, when we have stability in our macroeconomic environment, that is good uh, for our economy. So it did bring that. It did bring some stability in the world of macroeconomics, but also um, the financial discipline um, that uh, uh, ordinary consumers uh, needed to come across. Now, the real uh, reduction in fiscal um, deficit, which was less than 3% in terms of international uh, benchmarks. So um, there, there was uh, some success stories, like we said, uh, in, in terms of the positives um, that resulted uh, from this uh, particular initiative. Um, the inflation um, has dropped mostly uh, to within inflation targets. And like I said earlier on, this is one particular area that we seem to be doing really well controlling our inflation rate. Okay, so where is inflation? There we are. Okay, so we, we, we've set targets and, and we are within um, the targets that we have set uh, for ourselves in terms of the um, inflation rate. Um, so um, that was uh, considered as a success um, in terms of this initiative. And then also, um, you know, with um, foreign exchange reserves, uh, there was an, an increase in, in most regards, which was quite um, good because then uh, this is considered to be a positive. But obviously there were some challenges in, in that, you know, or stories that were not so successful uh, that were associated with this initiative. One of them being the failure to create sustainable um, job opportunities because sustainability has become a very important concept in the world of economics and business and that whatever that we do, it should have long-term um, implications. It, it mustn't be a hit and run or an overnight project, you know, uh, saying that, you know what, we are um, paving the, the, the park or whatever, you can't consider it to be a, a sustainable job opportunity because it's a, a project that would happen, well, that would happen um, over two months or over three months. Then what's going to happen after that um, in terms of the employment opportunities for the consumers? So they need to be sustainable uh, where else have plans where you empower people with skills um, that they can use in order to be more marketable um, in the workspace. Um, so if they possess or you upskill them um, so that they become you know, attractive um, in, in, in the labor market uh, when uh, firms and businesses are looking for um, employees. So that was considered to be a failure in this um, industry, uh, being able to create sustainable job um, opportunities. Another failure that they incurred was um, the, the part where they had to redistribute wealth more evenly. 
That is still a challenge even today. Uh, and, and, and in the world of politics, it has become a very important uh, matter that it seems to be getting the attention of many of the South Africans and um, the issue of redistributing wealth uh, more evenly in our country. So the initiative itself failed in doing this, in ensuring that wealth is um, evenly distributed uh, to all the citizens of our country. And then we also had another initiative, uh, the Accelerated and Shared Growth Initiative for South Africa, uh, the ASGISA. Uh, yeah, I've, I've had the different versions of that. There have been so many conferences um, just based on um, this initiative. So its objective is to coordinate, okay, so that's important, government initiative uh, to create economic development. And then also the key elements are um, they wanted to halve the uh, unemployment and poverty by 2014. Ooh, so we've been to 2014, we've been there, we've got the t-shirt, we can talk about it. And we are still sitting with high levels of unemployment and poverty, so they were not so successful uh, in this particular key element uh, because that was their main objective, that by 2014 um, they would have halved um, the unemployment and the poverty rates in our country. And then also they wanted to accelerate uh, economic growth to an average of 6% between 2010 and 2014. Okay, hence the, the accelerate phrase in the actual initiative. So did they manage to do that? We know that over the past couple of years, we've experienced a very slow growth uh, in terms of economic development and also in terms of economic growth. So it hasn't been up by 6%. Um, so, you know, there, there, there were challenges in terms of, you know, the accelerating process that they had planned. Um, so there were some failures um, in this regard. But let's see, let's have a, an evaluation of this particular initiative. So in terms of growth um, in infrastructure investment, um, especially in, um, in the public sector, we, we've seen that there's been an improvement in terms of our infrastructure. Um, the, the, our motorways look good. Um, there's been more shopping malls and cluster developments that get developed around um, Johannesburg, Cape Town, Durban and so on, um, on, on a daily basis, you know, uh, you walk past an open space and then uh, two months later you drive past the same area, you see that there are some developments taking place. So that could only be a good thing uh, in terms of infrastructure investment and development um, in the public sector. There was an employment growth, or the employment um, growth um, has lagged behind um, economic growth, reason uh, being that the real wage increases are higher than the productivity. Okay, so the employment growth has been behind uh, uh, in terms of economic growth because um, these two are used to see um, where we are in terms of growth and development. Um, they should be, you know, on the par or um, employment ahead. Well, you can't be have be ahead of the economic growth, but they should be almost in the same level. Uh, but we can see that, that that's been a challenge uh, where else we say our employment growth hasn't been um, improving uh, or not catching up uh, to our economic growth as well. So that's an area of concern. So the second economic strategy helped slightly to reduce unemployment uh, through the expanded uh, public works program. So this was uh, a, quite a success, I must say, um, the public works program, uh, because it, it really helped to upskill people uh, with necessary skills and expertise um, in order to be more attractive in the labor market. Um, so that is one element uh, that could be considered a success uh, in terms of this initiative. Also, poor economic growth and high um, unemployment for the youth. Um, it's still a challenge, a lot of young people that are unemployed in our country. And also, the economic growth hasn't been um, growing at a rate that we desire it uh, to be growing at. Um, so there are still challenges in this regard in terms of economic growth and also um, the high levels of unemployment that we find amongst our young people. 
Then we move on to the Joint Initiative on Priority Skills um, Acquisition, the GIPSA, which was another initiative um, that was introduced. Um, it is the skill development arm of um, ASKISA, and the focus is on skills development, especially through CETAs. Okay, so I kind of liked this approach because um, through the CETA program, we have seen uh, more internship programs uh, being given, uh, young people being given an opportunity uh, to gain experience uh, because the job market was saying, hang on, you don't have the required experience in order to perform this task. Um, so it was quite pleasing to see um, that, you know, the, there is a program that is willing to incorporate young people um, in terms of uh, providing them with the experience and the skills that they need in order to be part of the work environment. And then now going back to the expanded public works program. So this, this was a, or it is a nationwide government intervention to create employment using labor intensive methods and to give people skills um, they can use to find jobs uh, when they work in, um, EP, um, in EPWP uh, is done. Okay, so now re referring to the expanded uh, public works programs that once they've been part of this program they would get a certificate of some sort um, that would show that they've acquired certain skills um, that would make them more appealing to the job market uh, because they've now up they have some experience and they've possessed some new skills and um, so the expanded public works program played an important role in ensuring that it creates labor intensive market uh, for people to, to work and gain the experience in order to venture out into the private sector or to get jobs uh, within the, the public sector. And then also the new um, growth path, the NGP, um, also its main aim was to enhance growth, uh, create employment and create uh, greater equity. So the strategy is to identify key sectors as job drivers, promote and support industries and sectors that can drive job creation. Okay. This was actually quite a wonderful approach, I must say, because they were saying, let's, let's focus on the sectors that actually drive the job market. And let's capitalize on that by creating more employment opportunities for our citizens. And also let's support these sectors give them incentives and, 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 and the support in terms of the capacity um, that they would, need, they would need in order to drive more job creation. So it was the thought process uh, behind um, this initiative um, uh, was superb, I must say. Um, but were they successful or have they been successful in doing this? Let's find out. So the focus is to create 5 million jobs by 2020, reducing the un, um, unemployment from 25% to 15%. Okay, so let's start there. We know that currently the unemployment rate is sitting at 26% plus minus 26%. And, and, and now the, 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 the objective or the, the target is that by 2020, um, they would have created uh, 5 million jobs. And also uh, with the plan of reducing the unemployment from 25% uh, to 15%. I think you've heard this if you're watching um, the debates in Parliament. Um, uh, the, the different um, members of Parliament would often ask uh, this question, you know, in order to find out uh, what has the progress been in terms of creating these um, employment um, opportunities because political parties, you know, sometimes when they do their uh, 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 vote or their campaigns, uh, they would have certain goals or, 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 or promises that they make to the, uh, to, to the potential voters to say, you know, vote for us and this is our plan. And, and I suppose now it's, it's, it's time to, 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 to hold them accountable to the prom promises that they've made in terms of creating the 5 million jobs and reducing the unemployment rate from 25% uh, to 15%. It seems to be going up at the moment, uh, but you know, let's see what happens in the next few years. And then we come to the National Development Plan, the NDP. So that was also another interesting initiative that we 
um, that we, we, we had to study and understand. So it sets out uh, to expand economic opportunities uh, through investment in infrastructure, more innovation, and also private investment in entrepreneurship. Okay? Because we realize that in order for us to drive our economy, uh, we need to look at how we can further develop our infrastructure, invest more in infrastructure. But innovation has become a center uh, of business and economics because we can't rely on the traditional systems of doing things uh, whilst we need to benchmark our, ourselves uh, with, with, with first world countries that um, uh, function at a, a, a higher um, uh, competitive level. So we need to ensure that we also keep up in terms of um, trends and developments in the world of business and economics. So entrepreneurship has become a very important thing in South Africa in terms of job creation uh, because now we need more people to start businesses so that they can employ people in order to reach that 5 million rent target and reducing the unemployment rate from that 25% to 15% by 2020. So that would happen uh, when we've got the people that have the innovation that can think out of the box and identify opportunities or gaps in the market and then use the factors of uh, production in order uh, to fill that gap in the market. So we need entrepreneurs to assist in reducing the unemployment rate, um, rate. So we can't just look at the public sector to say that government should employ all these people in order to reduce the unemployment rate, but we need to bring in the private sector and also entrepreneurship, encourage people to start their own businesses and, and, and have ownership of resources and also by doing so um, employ more people into um, their businesses so that we drive um, economic growth. Right, so before we continue uh, as, and, and start looking at the Small Business Development Promotion Program, let's take a short break and I'll see you right after this.